check.
lesson three of the Doomsday Game Dev Club. Today we are going to take our animations that we created with our character for running and put it in the game and start with uh, put in an enemy and set up a simple collision so that when you step on it it will die. So let's get started. All right. So I've created a run running animation for my character. I'm going to go into actual sprite. As you can see, I've created four frames of animation to make it appear like he's running. Um, a little context on animation here that I haven't talked about is that these are what we call keyframes and there's two kind of frames in animation. There's keyframes and there's in-between frames. Keyframes are the most dr dramatic poses you see in an animation. So we have the normal pose of his legs together where his legs are both on the ground and then spread out as far as he can. Um, if there's time later today, I might show you how to do in-between poses, but I would create something where I could put the legs a little bit more different so they match here. So with that, we have this ready to go. I'm just going to export these one at a time as we've done before. Export that. Okay, so I've got those all exported. I am now going to go into Game Fruit and I'm going to select this guy that we've been using. I'm going to edit his animation. And as you can see, I already uploaded them into here. So what I'm going to do is, well, I'll just take these out so you can see what I'm doing. So first off, if you don't have this, you're going to want to have, I'm going to actually add one and call it run. Yeah, we'll just call it run again. I don't know if I can delete this, but I'll take care of it later. Anyways, so I have the run cycle here. I'm just going to add one, add another, add another, and then that again. And the time. I think I already have it where I want it to be. There you go. Let's make sure my hitbox. Oh, gotta change this up a little bit. Alright. So I'm gonna hit save. I need to change that name because it's I'm just going to call this blank for now. There we go. Now, go back. 
back into here and now we need to get his code set up because the way it's set up now is that he just plays the idle animation as he's moving so what I'm going to do is edit the code since I press the right arrow key and that tells it to move I need to tell it to play the animation as well in this chunk of code here so I'm gonna go into looks nope I'm gonna go into animation and I'm going to select this play animation and it says idle in there but I'm gonna change it to run because that's what the running is called and I'm going to copy this, duplicate it, put it in there, change it to idle. So what this does is when I press the right arrow key, it's going to make it play the run animation. And then when I'm done pressing it, it's going to go back to the idle, which is the animation it just plays normally. So we're going to test this code out. and hit the right arrow key and he's running so there we go so how now they got that up I need to set up for the left one but the thing is I don't have him facing the left direction so I need to go back into game fruit and I need to reverse it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to move it down here and I'm going to use this option called, well, let's see. Flip vertically, and it's just gonna change it to the other position. Turn this off. Now, I'm gonna duplicate this one, and flip it, and then Take this one, and flip it. So this is what you would do with your animations as well. So now I got, so I really don't need four of these. It was just to see. Like it needs to go one, two, three, four, but really I don't need a third one because these two are the same when I actually put it in there. So, I'm going to select this, export, as the PNG file as always, export, Alright, so I got those. Close this out. I'm going to go into his animations, edit animation. And I'm going to upload. Add files. Need to go into. I could have saved them to my folder, but I didn't. So for now, I'm just going to go into the downloads. And I'm going to select these last three all at once. You can, uh, here's a shortcut, key, shortcut. If you select one and then press shift, hold down shift, press that one, it selects everything in between. So I'm going to add those. Done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this run right. And I'm going to 
and change this blank one to run left. So now I can add these. Add that, that, that one, but then I'll add this one again so it has the right one. So that's too fast. I know I had it at point two. Try that again. Looks good. Save it out. All right, let's go back into the code. Oops. All right. So since I changed this, I actually have to change it to run right. Then I'm going to duplicate this, put it in there. change it to run left and then just duplicate this change it to idle let's try it out move right move left there you go so Got them moving right and left. So, but I also want to make them play something when I jump. And I didn't create a jumping animation yet, but what I can do is use an existing animation. which is this kind of could look like he's jumping. So I'm going to create another one, call it jump right. And doesn't really need any of that, but so Save it out. And I'm going to add an animation. I'm just going to duplicate this again. Or just if you don't remember, I can select from animation, play animation. jump right there you go now I still have it set up where you know if I move left he'll go that way so there and that's a little more advanced code to make it detect oh it was last at this animation, so do that. Um, there's a lot of code we need to fix with this. Like, I can continually jump forever if I wanted to, if I keep pressing the up button. So, I, there's things I need to do. Like, if I, if I jump, I can move left, but if I stop, it goes into idle. I don't want that. There's a lot of different things that we'll have to figure out as we go along. But for now, this serves its purpose. We got the running in. Um, it looks good. In case you're wondering why I made him look running like that, a little silly, I drew inspiration from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. If you've ever watched that cartoon, one of the Eds um, he runs really weird and my character is goofy so like I kinda was inspired from that and from another cartoon Muddy Mud Skipper from 
Ren and Stimpy cartoon. Like I kind of based my my um, ideas off of him. Those two guys. And so it's good to, you know, see what's been created and um, make your own spin on things. So I'm going to show you something with Mega Man. Just so, if you want, if you're having a hard time coming up with animations, you can find a sprite sheet. I kind of use some of these to get some ideas. Um, and you can see how it's all set up, and then you can kind of try to replicate it so you can get the right idea and make it look decent enough. And you know, this took me a good hour or two, maybe even two, I can't remember, to get it all correct and right the way I wanted to. And it could probably use some more adjustments. Like, I probably want to move his fin a little bit more. I'm going to do maybe flap his fin. As in the in between frames, I'm going to close his mouth a little bit more so it's. You know, not just open and close. Just little things like that. But I'll worry about that later. So, now we got that guy in. I'm going to do an enemy. So, I asked you for homework to create an enemy. So, one of my enemies is a little octopus guy for starters, a little mean octopus. I made two versions. I'm not going to worry about the second one right now. But um, it's going to, the red one's going to shoot like ink or something, projectiles from its mouth. But we'll, we're going to do that in the next lesson to get a projectile firing enemy. But for now, I just need this guy. Gonna, I didn't animate them or anything. I didn't really add any extra art, like with shading and highlights and stuff. I'm going to export it. Oops. And I'm going to add them to the game. Close that out. Go to media. And add files should be there already. Open up. Add files. It's giving me some weird error message. Not sure why. I might have to go into. So I'm using Edge. There's still a lot of bugs with this software that's getting fixed but I'm gonna go into Google Chrome oops first I need to save this out I might have might be bugged now because I'll just do that see if it'll stop giving me the error give me that all right well that's not good all the work I just did is gone. <sighs> I should have saved. Just got to get in the practice of saving more often. All right, so go to Game Fruit. And So I kind of already went ahead and did some stuff, but what I would do is upload media, add file, add that guy, hopefully this time it's okay. 
and now I can place them in places. But as I place them, I'm going to delete this one for now. It doesn't really do anything. There's collision there, like, and it moves around, but that's not exactly what I want it to do. For now, I want to be able to destroy it when I collide with it. So, I'm going to go to physics. And there's these events here. It says when I am get touched by a toucher, I'm going to tell it to, let's see, where is that? Right here, under control flow, destroy myself. So what I'm saying is for this octopus guy, my enemy, if right now, if anything touches it, it will be destroyed and it's gone and further down the road I want to make it so it recognizes only the the player character to destroy it and I don't well I'll just show you call the script enemy a one And so, if I touch it, jump on it, it's gone. Enemy is dead. But we need to get way more complicated and make it so it detects that the character is touching it from the top. It knows it's the player. And also, will want to have the enemy hurt the player too if they run into it. But we're going to go into that in the next lesson. That's pretty advanced code there. So, next up. I just kind of wanted to go into if you're curious about the uh, type of jobs there are in the um, video game industry just so you know get an idea so later on in life you can kind of be a little more specialized because right now I'm teaching you how to create the art how to design and how to um, program. Those are th the three main disciplines of creating games. But you'll most likely later down the road, if you get a job, you're going to be working in pretty much one of those things. It depends on the size of your team, but you're pretty much just one of those disciplines. For example, throughout my career at Disney Interactive, I was just a designer. I didn't code. I didn't create arts assets. I created the ideas. I would document them, share them with the team. I would create prototypes to help get my ideas across and, and work with the team members to get it all in there. I'd look for bugs. Um, refine the game mechanics, that kind of stuff. So anyways, let's get into it. So let's start with art side of things. So, we've been learning pixel art, but in a lot of games these days, it's all 3D modeling. And you 
when you're 3D modeling, and you know, depending on how long this uh, quarantine lasts and stuff, we might, I might show you some things later. We'll see, but um, or maybe just later down the road. But you can see you start off with a primitive shape, and you start creating. You can create things out of it, and these use what we call as polygons, and you, each square there is a polygon. Really a polygon is a triangle, so a square is two polygons, really. But anyways, you can see more polygons are added and formed into a face. This is from Nintendo Splatoon. This is a finished model without any textures and stuff on it. There's also animation. I've been teaching you guys animation. But there's also the 3D animation as well, using those 3D characters. It's a walk cycle, as we've seen before. So with 3D animation, you have to rig a character up. You have to put bones in them. And when you put the bones in, you have to tell it to work with these polygons. So like in the leg, I would say, okay, the polygon's here. I want you to work only move these polygons here that's pretty much rigging so you, so when you're animating you move the bones and it will move the parts of the body that you assigned it to do next in art is textures you create the textures of for different things some for characters as you can see this is from um, what is it called Pirates of the Caribbean um, there's some weird, like, textures are actually stretched out and weird looking and get mapped onto here. But a lot of software lets you just kind of paint it on these days like you would, like if you sculpted something and then paint, got a paintbrush and painted on it. There's also the textures for the environment, like this is a ground texture that you would see. This is a tile, just like we've been using in our game, um, but this would be on the floor. But yeah, they use tiles in 3D games too, like we've been using. So it can be used multiple times. Another part is lighting and rendering. Um, in 3D games, you have to put lights and make it cast shadows and make it look good. Um, normally, this is a level from a Batman Arkham, Arkham game. Um, and like you can see uh, in the back, there's like some glowing. Those are all lights. Sometimes they get the textures, get a lighting effect added to it and then rendered out. And what rendering is, is you've created something and then you save it out to look at that way. So it appears, or it looks the way you made it. Kind of like when we save files for our animations and stuff. But it makes it look like it's lit up without the actual light source there. Lighting takes a lot of memory with games. And when you're making a game, you got to like really be conservative about um, how much memory you're using. Because the more memory you use, the slower the game is. So you have to come up with ways to make it more efficient so you're not hogging all this memory. So we already know about 2D animation. We've learned it. There's a link sprite sheet. That's a character I made. So special effects. Um, those are like the when you see explosions in games, smoke, different things. They actually use particles. And what these are are little dots that get assigned the, the texture to it. So it gives the illusion that it's random and real like the smoke, like it uses mathematical formulas to generate kind of random flows of smoke. So it looks like real smoke because like a lot of times, like you've seen with our animations, it's the same thing going over and over again. And, you know, it, it's cool to make things look as lifelike as possible. So particles help achieve that. Um, now we going into programming we've already gone into that 
We've been learning a little bit ourselves. There's different languages, C Sharp, C++, JavaScript, HTML5. You know, there's, there's a lot of different programming languages. There are like universal concepts that once you learn one language, it kind of works on other ones, but there's something called syntax, which is like basically the language of how to get things used that are specifically for that. So you have to learn that. Um, then design, kind of talked about that. Um, you create the blueprints of the game um, and present ideas. There's a lot of presenting. I've ha I had a lot of meetings, get in front of people saying, here's what I'm thinking. What do you guys think? Um, before you can, if you're working with the team, there's usually um, a director of some sort who is giving the approval of does this go in the game or not and um, I had to present to a director or multiple directors at Disney to get their approval to move forward if they thought it was a good idea or not and these guys are you know seasoned pros who've been making games way longer than I have so they can see like problems in my design so sometimes things didn't you know I didn't think about everything or it just didn't work with what we're trying to achieve and so I'd have to start again so and you do have to kind of learn a lot about programming and already art too you don't have to like know how to do it all but you need to know how to talk to people about trying to achieve things as I've learned how to code and create art assets that's made me a better game designer and um, also so this is like kind of like what we're doing now we're creating a prototype in our own game to get mechanics in and get it going before we actually start making a full-on level we want all the pieces there working and 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 we understand what we're trying to achieve so we, it makes it easier to make the levels so in a 3d game this is kind of what you do it's called white boxing there's no textures on anything it's very simple geometry it's just to test things out and see if it's fun because you don't want to go into a game and just start putting a lot of effort into it without even knowing if the gameplay parts are fun yet you want to figure that part out first so there's a story team um, it depends on how big your team is like at Disney we had story people who actually created all the things characters would say all the cutscenes that you would see in the game or cinematics um, they work with the voice actors you know I as a designer like when I worked on the Toy Story in Space playset on Infinity 1 um, I would come up with some lines and mission objectives things like that and then I would give it to them and then they would write it so it sounds like the char the way the characters would say it. Um, just, you know, they're better at making write the words better. So that's primarily what they would do. Then we have audio. They create the sound effects, music, and everything, and get it in there. Um, usually audio comes in a little bit later in the game. As you will see as we're making ours, we're, we're going to worry about sound effects pretty later on. Um, but yeah, they, they have a tough job because all this stuff comes in at the end and then they have to keep up with everybody um, and try to get it all in. Um, yeah, I mean, there there is work done along the way and they put in... So a lot of the times as we're developing games until we get the finished part, we call them placeholders. So they'll create placeholder sound effects and music just to have something there. Um, testing is a big department where testers look for bugs and try to break the game and find and then report it and send it back to the programmers, the artists, designers that, so they can get it fixed. Um, Testing doesn't really start until later in making the game, too. Um, 
but they're an important part of that too. If you sometimes getting in the game industry, like you can start here to be a tester and work your way up. That's how a lot of people do it. Um, it's hard that way. Like really, the best route is just make your own games first, and then use that as proof that you can make games so you can get a job somewhere. Unless you're just trying to sell them yourself, but I mean, really, everyone's a tester though. No matter what position you're in everyone's testing the game looking for bugs especially at the end of the creating the game everyone's trying to find the bugs as much as possible um, there's marketing you create the advertisements commercials things like that uh, Instagram stuff you know there's producers there's man well there's a whole realm of management there's producers who help um, everybody get their their tasks done so kind of like a parent or a teacher making sure you get your homework done um, there there are deadlines like we have to get this part of the game done by this point so they make sure we can reach that and they track everything and manage everything so we know you know how the project's going because as you get later in most most game projects have a deadline like you have to have this game done by this date for example on Toy Story 3 the video game we had to have the game done when the movie came out we couldn't release it later because like months later because then everyone kind of forgot about the movie so we want it at the same time so we had to make sure we're meeting all the things we can or deadlines we can so we can reach that Sometimes we had to cut stuff because it just wasn't getting to where we wanted it to be and work was done, but we had to cut it because it just there wasn't enough time. Um, I talked about directors. These are the guys that make the big decisions. Sometimes there's art directors, creative directors, programming directors. That's uh, Shigeru Miyamoto. He's the guy who created um, the Mario games. He's created a lot of the Nintendo games a lot of what he's come up with like us creating a 2d platformer he kind of designed a lot of that stuff that we're using um, there's also office roles like human resources where you help hiring and if people have problems they can talk to him there's an office manager that takes care of the building and makes sure the lights are on and there's IT department they make sure all the computers are working and you get all the um, you know, make sure your internet's working, make sure you have the computer you need to do your job, things like that. There's account counting. They make sure everyone gets paid and everything's in budget. Um, sometimes these disciplines combine and make teams like on Infinity 2 and 3, I was on a user interface team and user interface, as you'll see later on, is like like a lot of the text and menus and stuff on the screen. It's also the controls. But, like, I helped develop this uh, skill tree, but I had to work with different teams to get it all together on Infinity. I think this is Infinity 2. But there's, like, a game engine team who just simply focuses on, like, like you could say the game editor we're using, Game Fruit, is a game engine. So there's programmers specifically working on that. There's, like, a character team where they create all the characters, but there's animators, there's the riggers all that stuff um, and that's kind of it um, if you do want to get into other stuff too and explore it there are there is software you can use um, oops um, there's blender that's a 3d free software there's also one called Siemens Edge like you can use this one to create 3d printed objects 3D Studio Max and Maya, those cost money. I learned those in school and they use it at when I worked at Disney. But you, it's good to start off with what's cheap so you can get used to it. Um, I talked about these books for animation, The Illusion of Life, the animator survival book. Um, there's other 2D art tools that you can use. There's one called GIMP. If you've ever heard of Photoshop, it's the same thing. You can edit photos. There's one called Inkscape. And that's like uh, Illustrator, and you can create artwork that's not like pixelated, but more like painting and stuff. 
and of course we're already using Piscal our app. Um, Here's some programming resources if you want to learn more about programming. There's one called Lightbot. It's kind of a game that teaches you how to program. Uh, also, JavaScript. If you want to learn JavaScript, there's that. There's this game called Wild True Learn, and it's visual programming. You're like trying to make a, a device for your cat so it can talk. So that's kind of cool. Teaches stuff. If you want to learn how to program websites, there's this W3 Schools. It's free. Um, video game engines. So we're using Piscal app, but there's other ones. Unity is free. Unreal is free. Uh, those are for 3D, but you can do 2D. Like I'm considering, I'm learning Unity right now, and with this this the platformer game I'm making, I'm considering put it in Unity later on because once I get all the art assets, I can put them in there, and then I can sell my game. I don't know if you can sell these games on Game Fruit, but but it's there's a lot more you can do with these. And then there's Game Maker and RPG Maker too. That these are more advanced, like 2D engines. Um, they do cost money, but I've used Game Maker. It's really cool. I wish I could teach that instead, but it costs money. So, but yeah, you can sell your games off of those too. And then, you know, there's tutorials on those softwares on YouTube, but there's a site I use called Udemy, and they have 12, they're not always on sale, sometimes they're like 150 bucks a course, but when they are on sale, they're about 12 bucks a course, so if you're trying to learn one of those softwares, there's not one on GameFruit or Pixel App, but, um, but you know, if you want to get a video tutorial it's like 12 bucks when they're on sale it's really good I've gotten tons of them over the years so anyways I think that's all we're gonna cover today um, oh I just wanted to also talk about the production cycle of video games um, so there's three stages there's pre-production which is where we're at it's where you generate the ideas, you come up with the design, and um, you prototype stuff. That's what we're doing. We're figuring out what our game is. We kind of have a general idea. We're making a 2D platformer, but we're still kind of figuring it out and what works and what doesn't. And then there's production, and that's, that's when most of the artists and programmers most of the team starts working on the game before it's a very small group of people and then you get everybody on and you just create the game as you go and you have milestones like every two months or so you try to get a part of the game done and be at a certain part so you know how much work you have left and how you're doing um, so once we get our game done or once we get the design done and like a lot of the mechanics working in the prototype that's when we'll start like laying out our levels and um, really making it a game but first I need to show you all the elements of how to create it before you do that um, and we'll kind of like some of what we create in and right now might be an actual level we'll use or something like that. I mean, it's up to you what you want to do. And then there's post-production. That's where you look for bugs and just get the game working. Um, so, like, for example, if you ran into a wall and you went through it, you would want to fix that so the character stops when they hit the wall, that kind of stuff. So you don't have to worry about bugs so much until that point. Like sometimes you want, like if it stops you from really getting the results you want, then you can go and fix it. But you know, bug fixing is primarily later. I mean, there's always bugs that get fixed along the way, but um, yeah, most of the bugs get fixed at the end. So that's it for today um, for homework. Um, if you haven't created an enemy, 
do that. Create a projectile, meaning something an enemy can shoot. Um, I know I talked about the creating an avatar, like special ability. I don't think we're quite there yet to get that implemented. It depends on how much work it is. But if you, you know, it doesn't, I mean, you want to design it. You want to create the art assets for it so we can animate it, so we can put it in the game and get it working. Um, but I think for starters, we'll just make it, well, I mean, we already kind of have it so where if you touch an enemy, it will die. I mean, that's similar to Super Mario, where you get a star and you're invincible. So maybe we'll start with that as an ability. Um, and as I teach you how to make an enemy that shoots things, we can use the same code to be used on your character. If they have a gun or a weapon that shoots, you can do the same thing. Um, but yeah, we'll just mainly focus on an enemy shooting. We're going to focus on character getting damaged too. So um, you might want to, we might do a life bar. So you could create hearts or something. Um, well, we'll probably make that during class, during one of these streams. But um not a lot of homework to do this week just create assets really start get your design of your game figured out like what are the characters what are the enemies what are their abilities what are the characters abilities what are the levels like I've decided I want eight worlds and I don't know how many levels will be in each world but um, that's what I'm going with so yeah just start really figuring out how it all works um, so that's it for now and thank you for watching and I'll see you next week oh next week I mean I don't even think people are watching right now anyways but I'm going to switch this to Tuesdays because of my schedule with work I'm still working and doing stuff I teach at a school I'm doing things for that from home I also do some delivery like DoorDash and stuff so just with my schedule and everything this and the way how crazy things are right now that's what works best for now um hope you guys are doing good and getting through this okay just keep busy we're gonna get through this hard time um it will end at some point so just stay strong and we'll talk to you guys later